we would like to ask we would like to have a dialogue with you and ask you questions about conscious uh, nutrition about food because now at the time of uh, isolation there are so many questions and so many subscribers who ask so the the questions that they ask is about vegetarianism how what was your journey also what was the reason for you to become a vegetarian well i think it is the desire to be happier you know every person would like to be happy i didn't have much knowledge about the subject when i started uh, the vegetarianism i just hope that it would help but in bhagavad gita there is a um, text you know bhagavad gita is a very ancient book and there it said that if one achieves a balance of five things he will have happiness he will heal feel himself happy and one of these five things it's uh, the food and when i started to be interested in the subject then i discovered the whole science you know i was 27 and i didn't put my much attention to what uh, i was uh, eating it was not important to me because we were taught to just maybe eat anything you know just like snacking even there is no proper meal uh, i didn't like to uh, to have ceremonial f meals i just uh, would eat uh, on the way here and there my stomach was working very good so i thought i was not dependent on on that but with time uh when i was around 30 so yes i was 27 right and then i started feeling i started feeling that there is some impurity inside of me that there is some like dirt and uh, i noticed that after each lunch i would uh, take there is this feeling of uh, of uh, impurity of heaviness uh, you know before i didn't pay attention to it but then i started realizing that and i told my wife Le let's uh, stop meat because i have a feeling that uh, meat is uh, is not good and my wife wa was uh, very much uh, in favor of that decision she said let's do that and immediately i i saw the big difference so one of these five things food is really important and if we manage to balance out all five we will be um integ we will feel integrity will happiness but yes let's start with the food um because the food enters our blood it enters our thoughts in a subtle way our mindset our character you, you know there is such a saying famous one you are what you eat so this i started realizing when i switched to uh, vegetarian food and we have a lot of questions about ch children um who are vegetarians could be vegetarians and how to do that we know that you have a daughter who have never tried meat and yes uh, i know such a um, prejudice um quite strong one and you know we already had a daughter when we started being vegetarian and so she was a infant she was a baby and she was you know she had uh, she has a, a record uh, she had a record in the hospital like in with a doctor with a pediatrician and uh, it's normal and so my wife um, would bring this infant my my daughter to this uh, ped pediatrician and so time came and doctor asked so now it's time to 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 give eggs and uh, my wife answered you know we are vegetarians and back in this uh, time 
in in Russia there was no this uh, uh, even notion the concept because uh, it was not possible to imagine life without meat and here uh, a young mother with an infant baby is telling that uh, she's a vegetarian so this pediatrician was so shocked uh, that she really expressed herself shouting. She said, but the baby will die. And, and then my wife was, of course, worried. She came to me and she shared. She said, the doctor said the baby would die. And, of course, I was also uh, concerned and uh, thinking what to do. But we did have uh, some people whom we knew, acquaintances, and uh, they had uh, children, these people. And uh, um, we went to this family just to see uh, what's the way that they, how they feed their children and without meat because they were vegetarians as well. And so uh, I know this uh, woman. She lives in St. Petersburg now. She's already aged. Uh, but she, back in the day, she gave me all the diet. Uh, she, she gave all the nutrition needed uh, diet. She wrote everything, um, even recipes, how to make vegetables, how to make bread, how to use beans. Uh, so the whole range of variety, in cooking variety, was open to us. And so we started to learn all of that so our daughter have never she has never taken any eggs fish or meat and i can assure you that she is very active she has a high education she is uh, like really an uh, adequate person <laughs> the question how does the food impact the consciousness of the person Okay, I know that um, th that some people might have doubts. Is it true that the food uh, impacts our consciousness? But here I can assure you there is no doubt in that. You know, you can look or observe how they feed the dogs in order to make them a really uh, angry dog, aggressive dog. And so, um, of course... If you give this uh, dog certain food, it will become like this aggressive an, uh, animal. But then if you start feeding the dog with the, uh, the food that was offered to the Lord before, uh, then, then it will be totally different character of the dog. You will see the difference. If, if you um, understand uh, the secret that I'm about to share, you will be successful. Everything that we accept inside, taste, see, breathe in, hear, there are um, everything that, that we see, hear, smell, and uh, taste uh, is very much connected with the quality of a mode of uh, material nature. It's uh, guna in Sanskrit. Uh, so the, the um, mode of nature is something that actually enters into you. So, you know, the uh, calories that we receive... It's not all that we, that we have, you know. It's really... Um, just uh, uh, just a little part of that. But imagine if you have all the calories that is needed, but then you don't look at this um, guna, this mode of material nature, because you can notice that some if you eat uh, um, something, then the mode uh, will impact you. Then you will say some uh, intoxication. You will have some strange speech. Because there are products that are totally destroying the consciousness of a person. And the meat is also mm, falling into category and the category of the ignorance. So, uh, the person's 
um, nature, the person's goal, uh, human, is for self-realization. To understand uh, really subtle things and meet can destroy this uh, subtle uh, understanding in the brain. For example, a person has to really distinguish uh, where is lust and where is love. And if you don't distinguish that, your family life will never be happy because you will confuse things. You will, you will marry someone out of lust, not out of love, and then you will be miserable all your life. And why there is so, so much misconception nowadays? Because the food now is uh, um, not regulated. The, the food impacts the consciousness. And you have to be protected from the lowest m modes of nature, of passion and uh, l ignorance. And so, if you want... Uh, also, we have to notice that the vegetarian uh, vegetarianism is not uh, only that, uh, what is we need for self-realization, but it's already a good step, like a basic step. There is such a question. Does vegetarianism influence your mm, mm, your creativity? Because you are a painter, you are an artist. Okay, Sa Sangeeta, um, how long you have been vegetarian? Eight years. Okay. And so, how did it impact you? Well, I was very easily inflammated, I didn't care for others. My consciousness uh, was uh, like diluted. I was really self-centered. I never thought about animals. And now I feel I'm more calm. And I started uh, actually care for others but that's not only vegetarianism that's also Vedic uh, knowledge but energy qualitatively it's very different my perception of the world is different and do you like that yes I like that or is it better to consume meat no <laughs> so you're not going mm, come back to the meat eating yeah no of course no I, I don't even <laughs> want to think about it and I support you of you. The person who eats uh, meat is really uh, more aggressive, um, more diluted and this is all a result of, of this uh, mode of nature. Actually, as humans, we should be differently situated uh, entities. We should uh, really uh, display um, other other qualities like uh, being more um, de like more depth in relationships, more kindness, more creativity. So what was the question? So how did the vegetarianism impact uh, uh, your cre creativity? What you create in arts? Well, I didn't really um, notice myself, but my friends uh, told me that there were changes. I think uh, the mode of passion is needed, and the mode of passion is uh, needed for the uh, field uh, with the cr creativity, because people uh, have... Um, mm, competition in this uh, area uh, in arts and uh, everybody wants to have fame and so uh, back then I thought that it's normal because we need to progress but now I understand that this type of um, uh, of uh, approach can never um, bring uh, depth to the art only mm, on surface you, you might uh, face some technical technical technicalities but if you have a spiritual understanding of things uh, um, you stop you quit this uh, competition for the fame 
you you stop being interested in, in that you start being interested uh, in in uh, yourself you you are introspective so i think this is a significant difference what uh, was with me before and uh, what happened after it helped me to to do the art without concern for the uh, success or failure and right now i believe that everyone should be mm, create for um, you know it's a part of our life no, now I understand uh, that everybody should be like that but when we have this um, uh, race to earn money uh, we are we are getting really tired of this competition in the world and uh, those who eat meat usually the only way they can relax from this competition is to take intoxication after What does mean the Ahimsa principle in terms of relationship between people? <laughs> wow, that's uh, an interesting question. Um, in the Bhagavata Purana, there is an interesting verse. Uh, and what does an egoistic person uh, think? He thinks, I, me. And the rest, it's them. He does not understand that each and every one is uh, this self, I. Therefore, we have to act with others the way we want that they uh, treat us as well. We have to be careful and attentive here. And, and, and we see that horses, for example, can be trained, the, um, or the bulls even, and they're all uh, vegetarians, you know, they, they like to work, they, they have some power, and they need to engage this energy. But, you know, tigers and lions also um, are strong, but uh, they never work. They express their power only in an aggressive way. And vegetarians, they apply this, um, apply this uh, in creativity. You know, the bull can understand uh, six orders. Left, right, go, stop. And so he understands this uh, by, uh, by hearing. And the elephant can fulfill... Uh, to up to 20, 21 um, orders. If elephants already can work in a team, collectively. Y you can already explain them that, imagine. So they can do it uh, like really as a team. Because uh, uh, elephants are very clever and they're all vegetarians. Or oh, the dog. The dog uh, can also fulfill the orders of the owner and she can be and she can be of course vegetarian or non-vegetarian um, and so she will be eager to uh, attack someone uh, if she's told to but you know um, but the vegetarian dog already would not be able to do this aggression anymore could you repeat the question again The question again is, what is this Ahimsa principle mm, in the terms of people, between people? So, what a vegetarian understands when, when uh, he is communicating, the meat eater will never even notice. Also, um, vegetarian, when he speaks, he is more conscious of what he is speaking. And it's more conscious. Uh, for example, majority of people, like uh, they, they don't understand that the words can destroy the life, even, and they don't even understand. They think, "Oh, I'm telling the truth. Uh, oh, I'm telling the truth. What's the problem? I'm telling the truth." But he does not understand what is the mode of nature in which he's, the quality of nature in which he's saying. 
And so meat eaters have a very low uh, mode of nature when they communicate. And and meat eaters they they don't they don't uh, like when the truth is spoken. They get offended easily. But vegetarians they um, vegetarians they are already more conscious. So at a lot of times uh, uh, people would separate just on the basis of this mode of uh, ignorance of eating meat. There are six tastes uh, of food that we can that we can have six main tastes. Mm. So sweet, bitter, uh, hot, um, sour, and w w which character is connected? Which emotion is connected with every taste? S s sweet is with happiness. <laughs> the the bitter <laughs> is with uh, unhappiness. You know, I I I don't remember now by heart. But I'm sure we will find this information right now in the in the internet and and then you can make a post uh, and share this information. Is the difference between um, <laughs> okay now the question is 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 about God? Is the difference? Uh, does God treat differently the, the one who eats meat and the one who is vegetarian? You, my subscribers, they know that I am... Mm, so the, the subscribers are asking this question. Yes, that is true. In the Holy Scripts it's written that um, the Lord Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam, there is a citation in Sanskrit, very ancient um, Sanskrit, Ishvara is the Lord, Sarabhutanam is the one who is situated equally in every living entity and he treats everybody equally. Ahimsa, okay, himsa or violence is not for the human if he wants to realize God. If he wants to realize God, he has to treat all living entities equally. When we kill animals and eat them, that is violence. That is not something the Lord would appreciate. In Bible, there are, there are, there are quotations that uh, that's enough of these bloody sacrifices. It just... Um, God doesn't want us to eat meat, but there is a compromise, of course. Because the gradual process will allow a human to to say no to the meat one at a certain point, and Lord, He does not need uh, anything. Mm. You know, God, God needs only our love, and it's very difficult to offer to God love when you just killed someone and offer something bloody, you know. So these ritualistic activities. Um, for, are given for people who still want to eat meat, uh, but they need to elevate themselves as well. So there are different rituals who are given to them. In Vedas, we can find that um, uh, we can find these rituals that are dedicated to pe uh, people who would like to eat meat. Then uh, this mm, case, uh, the human should take uh, some animal, like. Uh, uh, and with in the during the night when there is no moon, it means uh, uh, only once a month, he should take this uh, animal uh, in the hole in the total darkness, uh, and uh, and and he should uh, say, uh, "Mam so." We say "Masa," but uh, the mantra said "Mam so," and it mean and it means. Uh, uh, and it means today I will eat you because you are tasty 
and tomorrow you will eat me because there is laws of karma uh, what you will do the reaction will come and so we are agree with this goat for example yes that we take also Buddhists are knowing the, the laws of karma and so then uh, he cuts the neck uh, of the uh, of this animal and during one month uh, he can eat it after so it's total darkness is without moon this poor goat mom saw uh, and uh, uh, why it's like this complicated because maybe one day this person will realize maybe I should not do that you know but nowadays people don't even do any rituals they just go to supermarket um, this is horrible um, but I, I do not know, maybe you should see. But you know, if you see what they're doing in the butchering places uh, or slaughterhouses, you might not want, uh, you might be um, uh, traumatized by this experience. But you know, in supermarkets, uh, they put a nice music, the, there is nice packages uh, with this uh, corpse or the bodies of someone and then you are totally fine you come back and you you and you go to the kitchen but in vedas we we see that they say that there are six people who are responsible for the um for killing like uh, of of uh, of animals uh, not only those who eat the one who buys the one who cooks the one who transports them the one who grows the one who kills uh, so there, are, there, there is uh, really the karma will be spread between them. The there is one uh, lady who saw the the movie Earthlings, and she was crying after the second minute of it, and something changed, and she could not eat meat anymore. I'm a mother of nine months old and he has a allergy for a lot of uh, good pro products uh, and the traditional medicine uh, sa say that that they uh, that, that, that this uh, child should eat uh, red meat but of course, what else the doctors would uh, advise you? But you should go to the doctor who is vegetarian. Yes. Uh, I recommend you to find a doctor who is a vegetarian. Um, okay, I have a question for you. Uh, where does this, where does it meet? Why the meat has the good... Uh, um, the good things inside it because someone is eating the grass and then someone is eating the meat that was uh, over an animal who ate the grass someone is eating uh, the grains and someone is eating uh, the one who was eating grains so I'm, I'm really convinced, highly convinced that all needed uh, elements you can find in the vegetarian diet Okay, here I see that the, the child uh, is, is, is not well, he's ill here, so of course we need someone who has qualification, a doctor, but vegetarian one. Nowadays there are so many homeless animals who are wandering around. And uh, of course, even though uh, people are trying to take care of them, but of course they are, they are being killed and uh, not mistreated so how to do in this case can we can we eliminate them or yeah. Shh. okay that's uh, exactly the reason why i became a uh, spiritual master because we will not be able to solve a lot of questions right now you cannot really help uh, uh, those cows or um, bulls who are being slaughtered. Therefore, I became a spiritual master like a lot of uh, people did because we need to spread knowledge right now.
we can stop that uh, gradually, at least uh, diminish it. There are so many uh, cases that we cannot uh, solve them. Um, we cannot solve them separately now. Uh, is is a kadosh uh, fasting recommended for those who still eat uh, meat? Yes, a kadosh is for everybody. Is also for the meat eaters. Of course, uh, grains uh, and meat you, you shouldn't eat uh, in a Kaddish. It's 11th um, day after full or new moon. It's better even not to eat anything too fast. Now, I'm working in the Institute of Yoga. I'm looking... And I'm seeing a lot of um, yoga instructors, they don't follow yama ni yama uh, rules. And they, they eat meat and they say it's Ayurveda. I'm explaining them that uh, this is a totally perverted way of looking at things. And a lot of people who are yoga instructors, they are, uh, their beliefs are totally different. I would like, of course, to change uh, that, to explain. So I have a question. Wh why these misconceptions? Where it comes from, these misconceptions? You know, uh, not only yoga instructors are um, changing things. Uh, generally, people have tendency uh, to uh, misunderstand or... Uh, or distorting things, deforming things. But the spiritual master uh, never will deform any information. Ahimsa is a is a eternal notion and concept, so never diluted. You know, now there are vegans, not only vegetarians. Vegans, uh, vegans are even, uh, <laughs> I have an even more strict diet. Uh, I do not know how do they live. At least we, we have a milk of, um, of a cow bec because uh, c milk is uh, actually transformed blood of the cow. Uh, so uh, ve vegans, they are not even eating milk because now the, the way they um, take milk of the cow is with violence and so vegans don't even do that. Then there are prana, prana eating people who are eating just prana's energies. So, yoga instructors, if there are meat eaters, they are not yoga instructors. This is just ordinary meat eater. It's not yoga what they're teaching. Yama and niyama are the first steps of yoga. Without these steps, there cannot be any yoga. Meat eating. A meat eating, it means that they are not even on the first step of a uh, yoga system. I'm trying to publish some articles on that. Because a lot of uh, students are listening to them. Well, you know, um, there are people who will... Uh, listen to them. There are people uh, who will listen to us and join us. Don't be surprised that someone is uh, meat-eating. Be surprised that someone is vegetarian. You know, you mentioned vegans. And recently I've looked one video. And I'm trying to go to switch to vegan way. Because I understand uh, what I eat is not uh, well. And I've noticed that when, you, when I try to share vegani veganism uh, to vegetarians, mm, then it can be ag aggressively interpreted by vegetarians.
So this uh, fight between vegetarians and vegans, but perception, perception of the vegetarians, uh, of the vegans, I just do not know how to bring the information uh, in a nice way. You know, vegan or a vegetarian, it doesn't matter. Both of them are doing uh, himsa. Both of them are doing violence because v mm, vegan food is also uh, is also bringing some violence. You know, because they are living entities. Vegans cannot totally represent themselves as ahimsa. They just diminish the the level of violence, but. There are all jivas, jivanam. In Vedas, we, we will uh, find the statement that the uh, uh, highest forms of la life eat the lowest form of life. So we are not we are not speaking only about vegetarianism. We're speaking about prasad. You have to sanct sanctify the food before eating it. You have to offer it to the Lord, and because you cook it for the Lord for His satisfaction then he is accepting it uh, he accepting this karma and he uh, gives you back already purified uh, uh, food which is called prasad then it becomes uh, totally clean from uh, karma karma free it is uh, sanctified uh, divine food such a question If a person try to be vegetarian, then vegan, then uh, fruits eating only fruits, then he came back to meat eating. What does it mean? Well, in Vedas we will learn uh, that for the people who don't have faith, the austerity will be temporary. Uh, if the austerity is not connected with God, it will be temporary. So that's what you described right now. The person was vegan even, and then he came back to meat eating because he didn't get a high taste he just maybe had a goal to i don't know to improve the health but but he didn't develop love towards every living entities because if he did develop this uh, love he wouldn't come back to meat eating because meat is the product of violence of killing and so consciousness of this person was not de developed. And in order for the consciousness to, ele to be elevated, you, you have to uh, sanctify it. You have to, um, to sanctify it like this. It will be transcendental knowledge that, we, that you will get with this uh, sanctified food. And then you will never come back to the meat eating, even in your thoughts. One lady wrote, uh, she really wanted to ask you. He wanted to thank you, Alexander Gennadievich. He, she is really appreciating the wisdom. I really appreciate that you are spiritual, not just religious. Just today I received two books, Karan. Uh, and some purpose for Quran and I didn't open it yet but I, uh, but I did read uh, Quran I studied uh, back in the day even before vegetarianism when I read Quran before I didn't understand much as majority of people uh, from the holy scripts uh, they feel that the majority of things are not clear, but some things are powerful. And when I started um, studying philosophy and Vedas, then everything became more clear. Um, I understood that Quran and is is the is the same, and it's all mentioned.
so I understood um, things uh, through the philosophy. In Quran, uh, there is a special language, it's not philosophical, and Jesus Christ was speaking uh, mostly the, the, the stories. And Jesus was saying, I have a lot to say, but you will not contain what I have to say. And so when I uh, started studying Vedas, I understood that there is one God. I don't see um, big difference, um, the principal difference, there is none. Of course, there are a lot of difference in particularities and uh, little details, uh, but the essence is, is the same in Quran, in the uh, in, uh, Bible, in, uh, and it's uh, all about love and God. When I see how people torture animals, uh, I cannot understand how can I learn to love people. You know, it's very hard to love uh, a cruel person, even after his death. About cruel people, usually th they don't say very good things. It's natural, because a cruel person, he's not a human. He is just uh, a, an animal with, who walks on two legs. And and uh, in Vedas we can learn that uh, out of many many animals who walk on two legs we can maybe find one person who is a wise human. The the high is this love towards everything. Uh, the more you be considered a human. Is it possible to have a family life between a vegetarian person and meat-eating person? It will be complicated because the consciousness will change. Vegetarian will have different consciousness. Vegetarian, for a vegetarian, it will be very difficult to look how the meat-eater is eating this corpse. In front of you, imagine. He, he is opening the... the the opening in the kitchen, the this dead corpse, and then he he boils or cooks it, and then he eats. And uh, how will you feel being vegetarian? It will be complicated, I assure you. Um, usually, those who eat meat um, in the families, they try to do it uh, outside uh, of the house, and they try to respect this. Uh, um, that their spouse is eating is not eating uh, meat anymore and became vegetarian, so that at least they try to respect that and go to eat meat somewhere else. But normally, uh, because of this meat thing, there can be divorces, there can be big conflicts. Because meat means that there should be alcohol next to it, because without alcohol, uh, you cannot digest it properly. You will have... Uh, so it means the person will be not only meat eating, but also drinking, because otherwise how will he digest? So it's totally different uh, style of life, different goals of life, uh, different character. There are such cases, even in India, that there are different uh, religions, uh, and the styles of life different, but uh, you know, in India, the level of uh, goodness uh, of um, is is higher. But in our culture, it will be really difficult uh, to uh, <coughs> to mix. Okay, the last question. There are so many yogas now: Vinyasa, Ashtanga yoga. You know, bhakti yoga is uh, is the yoga which connects all yogas. Only one yoga actually exists. Other yoga, you, other yogas is the steps. Yoga is the stairs. You know, upstairs. Upstairs. It's uh, when you have to go to the state of samadhi when you realize God. And so you be <coughs> begin from the very down. It's karma yoga, then jnana yoga then Tiana Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga, and then Bhakti Yoga. When you reach Bhakti Yoga, all other processes are included. You see, 
in the end of the day it's one yoga like one religion which is just um, uh, separated on the parts because uh, because we have to begin from something for example if I'm at, if I'm attached to the activities to the fruits of action I have to I have to work still then uh, I'm I'm already disappointed with all these activities I start to think I start more becoming more jnani and and then uh, I even was uh, tired of, of that and then I started to do uh, meditation and then uh, after that uh, um, there is a contact with absolute and uh, like this is finalizing so bhakti yoga is the highest step uh, because it includes everything. It it, it includes uh, activity, action. It includes uh, um, thinking process and philosophy. Includes also meditation and includes love. Do you have Do you have any suggestions? <laughs> any instructions? Well, I recommend you. Uh, don't eat meat because the person who eats meat will never be able to understand the absolute truth so i really invite you to balance out your life your your food uh, try to try to go to this science to understand it uh, science of eating uh, you have to study yourself you you don't have to take things for granted you have to go and discover this for your family for your own good for your children uh, i invite you to study it uh, to try to cook also we shouldn't really uh, blindly follow something we should we should try to um, study ourselves uh, our this world around Could we invite you for the next uh, uh, life? <laughs> yes, yes, of course, next uh, time when there is opportunity. Thank you very much. Very important information, very needed right now. I would like to thank you. You changed my life uh, uh, totally. And then it started with vegetarianism, then more and more. And I know that you've changed lives of so many people. And I just hope that I can continue <laughs> progressive. <laughs> okay, me too. I hope for that as well. <laughs> Thank you very much.